Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here to talk to you about professional development. Now in this intro, we will talk about what professional development is, how your future employers are viewing current college grads who they are hiring, what Point Loma students think about themselves as far as preparedness for careers, and then go through some steps to how we can get you prepared for your future calling in your career. Okay, let's dive right into the slides. So this is an introduction to professional development and career readiness. Now, first, what is professional development? Well, professional development is learning to earn or maintain professional credentials, such as academic degrees, which you're doing right now, uh, to formal coursework, attending conferences, and informal learning opportunities situated in practice. So note that this is a lot more than just getting your degrees. And really it's earning and then maintaining, working to continue to maintain that uh, level of professional development. You haven't attained it once you graduate, you continue to attain and maintain it as you go throughout your career. There are a variety of branches of professional development and they include scholarly expertise, communication skills, which we can always be honing, leadership and collaboration, which you will continue to grow into as you gain more wisdom and experience, career preparation, which we'll do in this class, and then personal development, which we've actually just spent a lot of time on personal development, uh, self-reflecting and learning more about what makes us tick and how we can leverage our strengths and build up our weaknesses and be more empathetic to those around us. Now, there's a lot of models of personal development, or sorry, professional development, and most of them include some sort of combination of the following. Um, I've already mentioned scholarly expertise, communication skills, I actually mentioned all of these. I guess now they're just in this cool swirly figure, but um, you can see how they swirl around professional development, representing different domains that we can focus on. So we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. You know, some people might focus only on scholarly expertise, and yes, maybe they are the smartest person in the room and they're a know-it-all, but perhaps they come across poorly because they are a know-it-all and they have poor communication skills, or maybe they don't have their um, career preparation in order. They don't have a good cover letter and resume and they don't present themselves well. And they don't know how to dress um, professionally in order to suit their job. So we can't just focus on one of these domains. We have to focus instead on all of them. So the National Association of Colleges and Employers defines career readiness as the attainment and demonstration of requisite competencies that broadly prepare college grads for a successful transition into the workplace. So when college is done and you have graduated, your work is not over. We have to still transition you well into that field. And the work that we're doing in this course will help you to get there. So here are some components of career readiness, and I'm going to highlight the ones that college graduates need to work on according to employers that then employ these graduates and see very quickly the shortcomings that they might have. So critical thinking, problem solving skills, these are your analytical reasoning skills, uh, being able to apply logic to issues, make decisions. Then oral and written communications, we know what that is, like how well can you write, how well can you speak. Um, teamwork and collaboration, how well can you work in the team, people who have different um, ideas and different approaches to the problem. How do you incorporate that into your problem solving? And then digital technology. How can we leverage the technologies available to us? Um, so of these career readiness um, areas, it's really the communication skills and the teamwork uh, skills that uh, recent college grads are really lacking. We're seeing a lot of individualism in recent college graduates as well as poor communication skills. And that's really why in my courses, I try to stress this so much. If you took uh, structural kinesiology with me, then you know that it was all about how well can you communicate these ideas? How well can you come across in a video and appear professional? And how well can you work with a team in order to solve complex problems? Now the next set of four areas of career readiness, leadership, uh, which we know what that is, <laughs> um, leveraging strengths of other people to achieve common goals, professionalism and work ethic. So this is coming across um, 
as an accountable, effective, loyal, sort of show up and do the job type of person without other distractions, you're able to manage the workload, etc. Career management, how can you identify and articulate your own skills, your knowledge, and you can leverage those in the position that you're in or in the position you hope to be in one day. And then global or intercultural fluency. How well do you know the outside world and demonstrate openness and inclusiveness to new ideas and other cultures and ways of doing things that might appear foreign to you? Well, the things that <laughs> employers have identified, actually three out of the four, it's really leadership, professional, slash work ethic and career uh, management. So all three of these areas, they have found recent grads to be lacking in. And so we're gonna work on those. So here's the career readiness process that we're going to go through. First, we're going to achieve proficiency in essential knowledge. And that's what you're doing in all of your courses. You are getting the prerequisite knowledge that sets you up for grad school or a a career path right out of college. For most of us, we're going to grad school, but for some of us, we might be able to start in our career right away. We have to acquire the practical transition skills. That's what you're doing in this course. How do we take what we learned in school and then apply it to a career where we have to work with real people and there's real um, you know, patience or money or even lives on the line. Uh, then we need to develop key learning skills and cognitive strategies. So now you, you have a job, let's say you land a job, what do you do in that job? How do you actually reason through all those uh, problems that you face and put your knowledge to uh, use? And then finally, building a foundation of self-understanding and engagement strategies. So how do you get to know yourself better and engage with other people better? And hopefully, so far, we've, we've been doing the understanding of self, and we're gonna start focusing on engaging with other people. So this table here, um, I really like this table because I think it conveys well the challenges that you all are facing in, in the world you are entering as far as your employer's expectations. So this uh, came from a job outlook study from 2018, um, surveying thousands of employers of recent college grads across the country. And what they did was they had employers rank the importance of these various categories that we've been talking about. And then they had the um, employers rate how well or what percentage of the students that they employed demonstrated those uh, uh, competencies, right? And then the awesome thing was that they also had the students rate their own or the recent grads rate their own ability to be proficient in these competencies. And so what I've done, I actually um, have been polling the seniors uh, from past years to see how well they think they rate on all of these competencies. And so if a senior rated him or herself as competent in one of these areas, then they add to that percent. Okay, so we're going to see uh, where the employers and the student ratings match up and where maybe there's a bit of a disconnect, okay? So, <clears throat> Let's see, for the first one, we're looking down here at digital technology, and this is of low importance to employers. And it looks like employers tend to rate students higher than they rate themselves. So that's a good thing. That means that you know, you're know you um, setting a low expectation and you are uh, beating that expectation. Okay, the next thing to look at is teamwork and collaboration. So. And I don't think these are in any particular order, by the way. Um, so teamwork and collaboration, students think that they're pretty darn good at that, but the employers say, yeah, you are pretty good, but maybe not quite as good as you think. It's also an, an important competency at 4.56. Oops. The next one is uh, global and multicultural fluency. This one was very low on the list of importance to employers, which, you know, it's, uh, it's an important thing, but maybe in the day to day, uh, undertaking of your job it's not quite as important as maybe it is in other areas of your life outside of your workplace and in general it seems like students and employers agree that um, students can really bring or recent grads can really bring up their competency in this area okay so next is career management and this one is where we start to see kind of a bigger disconnect so students 40% of students rate themselves as proficient in this category, 
and employers think really only 17% of students are proficient in career management. How do you set yourself up for success and you know, making the right connections and taking the right steps in your career? Then we have critical thinking and problem solving. Again, students have ranked themselves higher than actual. In real life, employers think that just about over half of students are competent in their critical thinking and problem solving skills, whereas uh, three quarters of students think so. And then for leadership, man, students, uh, at Point Loma students, they think that 85% of them are these great leaders, but employers are saying, hey, uh, the recent grads that we get, only about a third of them. And you know, I think that probably Point Loma students are a little bit higher than that 33%. I do think that Point Loma attracts leaders and we also develop leaders, but um, I, you know, I still think our, our ranking is probably a bit off. And then the last two, oral communication and professionalism. Again, these are overrated by students. Now, probably the most glaring deficiency on here for students is this professionalism and work ethic category. I think the younger generation is just more casual. They're less formal than older generations, but the older generation is the generation that will be employing you most likely, unless you work for some cool swank, you know, young biotech startup, or unless you're on uh, Wall Street or something, most likely you're going to be working for people who are older than you and who expect a certain level of professionalism and decorum. And, you know, that's just sort of the way things are. And so our recent college grads have a lot to learn as far as presenting a professional outlook to their employers. So how are we gonna do that in this class, all right? We just spent a ton of time, probably too much time, going over those numbers, but how do we actually uh, you know, build those things out? So in this class, we'll do the following. We will develop an elevator pitch, and we'll know it so well that you can you know, say it from memory, from the back of your hand, but not just from memory, but you can be engaging with it, and you can fit it into any situation, whether you're in the elevator or sitting next to someone on the plane, or you bump into someone at a conference, or you know you randomly meet someone at a coffee shop or your uncle introduces you to his friend who happens to be in some business and you know you can quickly describe your passion your calling and you know your your career path what where you are intending to head how you intend to serve people along the way we also have a speech called the passionate speech for lack of a better term and this is where you give a five minute speech and you just essentially try to persuade us about something that you are passionate about in your field. So maybe if you're going to be a PA one day, it's maybe you're persuading us about some sort of evidence-based care practice in the PA realm. Or if you are going into personal training, maybe you are persuading us about um, healthy eating. Or if you are into yoga, persuade us why yoga is beneficial physiologically and psychologically and emotionally. So what is it you're passionate about? And can you convince us? Can you articulate well that idea? Because that ability is going to come in handy, not just for that little, you know, small niche that you are talking about, that you're passionate about, but uh, multiple times throughout your career, you will have to persuade people as to why they should follow you or why they should believe the, you know, whatever it is you're trying to get them to believe. We will also develop our LinkedIn profile. So the LinkedIn profile, it's like, you know, it's like Facebook, but for the business world. Let's get a professional headshot on there. We'll get the title just right. We'll get the about, uh, you know, the about you section looking good. And we will connect with all of your peers so that you start to develop connections in the professional world. We'll also create a mock cover letter and we'll have multiple other students peer revise it. I will read it over and make sure it looks good to go. And I'll give you examples of cover letters that I've used in the past uh, to get jobs. Some of them I, you know, haven't gotten me the job and you can see along the way how it's evolved all the way up to when I applied to teach here at Point Loma, I'll show you that cover letter as well. And then finally, um, informational interviews. Um, Actually, off the top of my head, I don't remember if I included that in your assignments, but check the syllabus because it tells you about them there. But essentially what this is, is the informational interview is an assignment where you go out and you identify somebody who is where you want to be one day, or somebody who you admire in the field, and you sit down and you ask them a series of questions about their career path, their um, their passions for you know why they went down that path, why they took that journey, and you just take notes and, it, and you're just there to make connections, to learn 
from their experiences. I did this when I was graduating, um, I think actually in, my, in the fall of my senior year. I picked three individuals, a physical therapist, a, a um, strength and conditioning coach, and an exercise physiologist. And guess what? That ended up landing me a job with the physical therapist in his clinic and developing a nonprofit for research with that physical therapist. It got me an internship at the strength and conditioning facility, which turned into my first strength coach job. And it launched me um, in my career to eventually go back to grad school and get my PhD in sport physiology. So these informational interviews are a really great stepping stone that can be to your future success. <clears throat> All right, so that was a brief intro to professional development. Hopefully I've outlined you know, where we're going, where we're headed with it, why each of these assignments is important. Over the next few weeks, we'll be working through these and creating these so that you will leave this class with just a really great setup and a launching point into applying for jobs and grad school, etc. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you all on the next video. Whew, it's late, it's really late. I shouldn't be making this video, but I am. Hopefully my eyes aren't too red. I don't, don't know why I'm saying this. Hopefully you can't see the bags under my eyes. Gotta clean those. We will also develop our link.